said, I will switch a little bit to something else. You see totally different organs. Nothing has to do with the heart. And in the next following minutes, I would like to focus a little bit on the liver. Why do I would like to do this? We, I would like to give you some um, data from a study we just performed together with Berlin in Munich, together with data from these three patients groups with a central question of do we find liver pathologies in patients with congenital heart disease predisposed to liver changes. And as you can see here, there are no patients with pulmonary atresia, but we have patients which are cyanotic. Therefore, this circle will close with therefore. We had 58 patients. Eight patients were excluded to missing data and so on. And the distribution of these patients were 27 patients with atrial septal operation, Zenning master patients, 10 Fontan patients, and 13 patients with Eisenmenger. And what did we expect? So we have to jump in a little to the liver pathologies. You see here on the left side a typical nutmeg and the gross pathology appearance of a liver affected by chronic passive congestion is speckled like a nutmeg. In German, probably a little bit easier to understand, Muskatnussleber, we all know. And the dark spots represent the dilated and congested hepatic venules, as you see here, and the paler areas are unaffected surrounding liver tissues. Subsequent hepatic fibrosis is called, we all know, cardiac cirrhosis. When we <coughs> pop in the histological changes, we have here definition I will give you what means liver fibrosis. It's a histological change caused by inflammation. I make it simple because we are cardiologists. And liver delayed cells are overactive and trigger the extracellular matrix synthesis to increase. We see normal, much more normal amounts of collagen fiber deposits in the extracellular spaces of the liver. And as you can see here on the left side, it's norm there are several classification systems and we used in our study the Metavir scoring system. You see here on the left side a normal liver parenchyma. And then you have mild degree of fibrosis as you can see here in the periportal and portal um, deposition. And you see here in the moderate form that they are starting to form some septum, some septa. And on the severe form of fibrosis, you get here more of bridging septa. And in the last form, it's stage four, it's called cirrhosis, the liver starts to separate in nodules, the liver parenchyma living to the, to the gross pathological um, picture you see here, the liver cirrhosis, the end stage of liver disease starting with fibrosis. And this has, leads to the risk of development of portal hypertension, of liver function impairment of course, and also carries the risk of having hepatocellular carcinoma. This might happen to our patient we deal with. Oh, sorry. Which are the mechanism leading to that in these three patients group? Well, we are talking about cyanosis. We are talking about probably impaired cardiac function in these three patient groups, about hepatic ischemia by low flow state, systemic venous obstruction, especially in the Zenning and Fontan patients, and of course in every th of three these patients group in elevated central pressure, especially in the Fontan patients. So what, we, what did we look for? We looked for with special ultrasound methods after fibrosis and cirrhosis. We looked after serological markers and after the impact of these factors due to, to possible changes. So, to help you to, to get in this um, examination, I would like to give two explanations of the special ultrasound examination. 
first we use the fibro scan. We did not do it by ourselves. We did it in cooperation with um, gastroenterology center in Munich and in the Charité. And the fibro scan uses shear waves to measure the el elasticity of the liver. The shear waves passes through the liver and they are affected by the amount of scarring, which means fibrosis or cirrhosis. And the velocity of the wave correlates with the stiffness of the liver and reflects the degree, degree of fibrosis. And the unit, how you measure it, is measured in kilopascal. Here is a um, relation to the fibroscan results to the histological results, as you can see here on the left side, there is no fibrosis coming up, up to 12.5, which means that the patient has um, severe fibrosis or even cirrhosis. And um, to give you an idea what's normal, I took off an uh, work from 370 healthy people. They were measured routinely by FibroScan and they had a value of 5.3. The other method we used is called red acoustic radiation force impulse imaging in short terms RFI, and they measure also by um, ultrasound short duration acoustic pulses and they generate tissue displacement within a localized area of the liver and resulting in shear waves propagating away from the region of interest, as you can see here. And this shear wave velocity is measured in, milli in meter per second, and they reflect also, as the fibrous scan, the stiffness of the liver. And speed is increasing <coughs> with stiffness. Then we looked after serological parameters we all know and we daily deal with, and we looked after specific parameters which um, give an idea about the amount of um, extracellular um, synthesis, which is an example like hyaluro I know I couldn't sell it. Yet. Okay, um, hyaluronin. You, you hopefully I spelled it correctly, yeah, I have some experts here. And the other wires were indices which uh, looked after liver function, and uh, one is the, the APRI index, which looked after the ASD um, increase uh, divided by thrombocytes, and the other one is the FIB4 index, which also included the age of the patient. Um, coming to the results, um, we had 50 patients, I already said, which entered the study, and the median age was 33 years, so you see we have all adults. The oldest group were the patients with the Eisenmenger patients. That means that they were the patients who were, they were longest exposed, exposed to cyanosis. The median age of the operation was 3.1 years, and nearly half of the TGA patients were operated within the first year of life, and 80% of the Fontan patients had their last step of the Fontan operation within the first and second decade, meaning that we had the shortest exp um, time exposure of cyanosis in the um, TGA group than the Fontan group and the longest in the Eisenmenger group, but it's still it's just an idea because the Eisenmenger patients don't start with their birth, of course, getting cyanotic. But uh, when we see what time period we observed, these were um, the patients where we had the longest time of cyanosis. Coming to the results um, with the fiber scan, we had in all patients here 60% of fi fibrosis and 60% in the TGA patients, 100% in the Fontan patients, and only 20% in the Eisenmenger patients. But they were the longest time, with the longest time period of cyanosis. Looking a little bit more detailed, um, we found that the TGA patients in 40% had really nothing, and uh, a mild form of fibrosis and moderate form of fibrosis was about found in 20% and also um, about 20% with the cirrhosis. 
Looking to the Fontan patients, we found they had more severe forms of fibrosis and cirrhosis. And interestingly, 80% of the Eisenmenger patients didn't have nothing. What about the ARFI patients? They were quite similar. Um, looking at 60%, we had here 70% having overall fibrosis. Nearly the same numbers in the TGA group and in the Fontan group, but here 60% in the Eisenmenger patients. Looking here more detailed, we could see that the TGA distribution rates of fibrosis and cirrhosis were similar in the TGA and in the Fontan patients group. But in the Eisenmenger patients, 40% had only mild fibrosis and only 10 severe and only 10 cirrhosis. What about the serological parameters? As you can see, the most important serological parameter we found was the gamma GT in all patients, and especially in the Eisenmenger patients, an elevated bilirubin. Okay, 56% had conspicuous parameter in the TGA group, and nearly the same in the Eisenmenger group, and 80% had conspicuous parameter in the Fontan patients. And what about the fibrotic markers? Hmm. It was not so striking. We could see that most of the patients had normal fibrotic markers, although pathological results in other examinations. Overall looking means that we took our data and discussed them with our hepatologists and said, okay, if we see everything, overall assessment about these patients, we could say that nearly 60% of the patients with font with um, Mustard and Zenning had fibrosis and cirrhosis, 100% in the Fontan patients, and nearly 40% in the Eisenmenger group. Putting this now into a bigger room, I looked for other studies from patients with Mustard and Zenning. I couldn't find any. Looking in the Eisenmenger patient, I could not really find any, but uh, I could found some or even getting more and more about Fontan patients. And as the Homburg group already published in 2008, they could uh, really clear um, that, they, that patients with Fontan procedure have liver fibrosis children and that this risk is increasing with the time um, interval since the Fontan procedure. But then I looked after um, more actual literature, and I could find from the Boston group that the highest liver stiffness measurements are associated with unfavorable pontan hemodynamics. That was not really surprising me, but then I found another work from another paper from the Ohio working group, and they said that the extent of fibrosis is independent independent of hemodynamics in front patients. That was a little bit confusing. So we are, or our own thoughts were, were from our work are that probably that the chronic congestion seemed to play an important role more than the cyanosis and that chronic congestion may be a, a main factor for liver changes in our three patients group are caused by an absent subpulmonary ventricle in the Fontan patients, of course, an impaired cardiac function with tricuspid valve insufficiency, obstruction of the systemic venous system, of course, in the um, Zenning and Mustard patient group, and probably a stiffness of the atria in this patients as well. What we really can state from this study is that when we look, and I say when we look, we found that our adult patient with Zenning, Mastan, Fontan, and Eisenmenger are suffering from liver problems, that we should really check them in larger intervals on a basis. And if we find something, we have to check them on a regular basis together, of course, in a tertiary good center with a gastroenterology group who is experienced in this patients too. 
and what I found from all my work concerning this topic, because I'm also not a really specialist in uh, liver pathologies, was that we have to look after this, and there's still a lot to do. Thank you for your attention.